Hey guys, I'm back here with my 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This is the 4.7 uh, V8. And today I'm going to be replacing the transmission pan. You can follow along for this to service your transmission as well if you'd like to do that. The reason why I'm changing the transmission pan is because this one has a drain bolt. That way it's a lot easier to do maintenance on it where the current one doesn't have a drain bolt so you have to drop the whole pan in order to drain it. Um, in order to do this you're going to need all of these items. You may need a jack or ramps like I've got here. These are just Rhino ramps that support up to 16,000 um, pounds. I'll have links in the description to those as well as the jack stands and all of this other stuff. Um, over here I have a ratchet set, I have a torque wrench which you will need to torque your um, transmission pan to spec, uh, pan to drain all the liquid, replacement ATF plus 4 fluid, um, I've got brake cleaner over there to clean things up, there's also um, adhesive spray for a uh, gasket if you choose to use a gasket or you can choose RTV um, Ultra Black instead. Uh, if you want to service your transmission completely you can also buy um, replacement filters. These are just Wix filters so there's two of them. You might also need a pry bar to initially take off the pan if it's in there with RTV. You also need gloves if you don't want to get transmission fluid all over yourself. That's basically it for that. I'd suggest you put something down on the ground like a piece of cardboard or uh, in this case I've got tar paper uh, so you don't make a mess. I would also suggest that you have a metal brush, some goggles or safety glasses, and a shirt or a rag. Those are just so you can brush the pan um, and the bolts and everything if in case there's dirt. The glasses are so you don't get the dirt in your eyes. The shirt's just to wrap around your face so you don't get um, all that debris all over your face. And I would also suggest you get a bucket or some empty uh, milk jug so you can fill those up with your old transmission fluid so you know exactly how much to put back in the transmission when you're done. So here I'm using these ramps just because it makes the job much easier and you don't have to lift the car. I'm using these jack stands for safety and there's also some blocks um, behind the back tire so the car doesn't roll back although it shouldn't do that anyway. So when you go under the car um, you're gonna see this and then if you keep on following it back you should see your oil pan here and if you keep going back there this is the transmission pan I've already used the metal brush to uh, brush this and all the bolts so there's no dirt or anything around here when you do this make sure the engine is not hot otherwise you're gonna burn yourself um, with this exhaust so yeah, clean this up, make sure it's as clean as you can get it, and then um, go ahead and start loosening up these bolts here. So according to this manual here, which I will have a link to in the description, this should be performed every 100,000 miles if you're a light user, or every 60,000 miles if you're a heavy user and you're using your car for towing or heavy-duty stuff. Before you go and take the pan off, make sure that you uh, clean, have a clean pan like this one and there's no dirt or anything in there if you're going to be reusing your liquid and then just go ahead and put this under your transmission pan. And all of these bolts around the transmission pan are 8 millimeter bolts. And just to make sure Make sure that your transmission is an RFE transmission to do this job. It may be different if you have a V6 Jeep instead of this V8. So be aware of that as well.
Once you have about half of them done back here, you can just loosen up these, but don't take them out. Just make sure they're loose so that you can pry the back of the pan. Um, and that way it'll just drip down back here rather than all over. Now I'm going to be replacing the whole pan. So to me, it doesn't matter if I bend it down a little bit, but if you're doing it, just be very careful not to bend the edges um, otherwise this won't sit properly and you'll end up with a leak and there as you can tell now it's starting to drip it'll start dripping more and more um, the more you get these bolts loose and some of these bolts be very careful because um, you can't really get to them very well and uh, you've got to be very careful to not strip them. Once all the bolts are loose, you can get your pry bar and stick it back here and just pry it down a little bit so that it, it drips down more liquid. If you don't have a pry bar, you can also just um, use a knife and cut the RTV or seal if there is one. Um, it, this is a lot easier if the last time you got your Jeep serviced they used a gasket but I got this transmission um, serviced about 15,000 miles ago so I don't really need to service it I just want to change my pan so that when I do need to service it it'll be a lot easier. So here you can see it starting to drip a little bit more and again you just want to stick your pry bar right there in the middle and try and pry um, the pan down a little so it starts to pour. And don't try to rush this. It's better to just take your time than to end up with a huge mess. Once you've got a good uh, little waterfall of liquid going, then just um, let it let it go and let it drip as much as possible. Alright, so once you have a really slow drip like that and you've got a ton of liquid down here in your pan, um, what I would suggest doing is swapping this out really quickly and then um, pouring all this liquid into a bucket or another container before you drop the pan because this is still filled with a bunch of liquid and when you drop it you need to have something to catch it and if you have a bunch of liquid here you could end up making a huge mess. So here I'm just going to use this old pot and swap it out for this for that drip and then pour all this liquid into a bucket. Alright now once you've done that you can go ahead and remove all the other bolts around. Make sure you leave these at the front still in. And remember that this whole thing still has a bunch of fluid. Now before you drop the pan, I'd suggest you put one bolt back here. 
and then take out all of these bolts except for one of them whichever one you can reach the easiest and just uh, loosen it up until you're able to um, just loosen it with your fingers then once you've done that put your hand here on the pan and use your other hand to loosen up the bolts and then very slowly lower the pan. This is probably the most difficult part and the part where you are most likely to make a huge mess. So unfortunately I wasn't recording this but what I did was basically take out all the bolts around the side and left one back there in the corner and one over here and then I let the fluid drain as much as possible and I put my hand on the pan, undid one of the bolts back here so that more fluid could fall down. And then once there was the least amount of liquid possible, I put my hand there, removed the final bolt, and then swiveled the pan over to the side a little bit so it could drip down into the drain pan. And as you can see, I didn't really make that big of a mess down here. Now here you can see the pan. And I've got it draining here into the bucket and I've got a little bit more fluid here. It looks kind of blue right here, but I promise it's red. Try and get as much of your fluid as possible, but don't stress too much if you don't get it all. As mentioned in, in at the beginning, um, you'll probably want to have some ATF plus four um, to refill it in case you end up spilling some or losing some. If you're reusing, then a quart should be more than enough. If you're servicing the transmission, if you're doing a complete flush, at least on this model, the four uh, point seven a V8 you're going to need 6.5 liters of fluid to replace it with um, and again you only have to do that uh, if you haven't serviced your car for a long time at least a hundred thousand miles or so or if your fluid is black or brown it needs to be bright pink or bright red you can tell mine is pretty good so I think I'm just gonna reuse it and then save those two that I've got there um, if this car ends up making it to 120,000 miles or 220,000 miles so we'll see how that goes and there you can see the amount of liquid that I was able to get so here's my transmission pan if you rub your finger like this and you end up having a bunch of debris then you definitely need to flush out all the liquid but as you can tell here with mine it's there's literally nothing there so i shouldn't really have to worry about it too much you also want to check the magnet over here this magnet will pull all of the debris towards it so it doesn't get back into the transmission so you'll definitely want to at least clean this magnet if your transmission looks as clean as mine. Now, if you're going to be um, reusing your pan, then this is where the brake cleaner comes in handy. You can just spray this out, clean it out, make sure there's no oil residue. And if there's ultra black or any sort of RTV, make sure you scrape that off here on the side and you also want to scrape the RTV off on the transmission so here's my old pan and here's the new one really the only difference is that this one has a drain bolt so just go ahead and take the magnet from your old one and put it in the same spot just back here in the back corner and if you have a new pan you may as well spray it with brake cleaner just to make sure there's no sort of a uh, film or anything that was put there during the manufacturing process. So here are your two filters. There's that one and this one here. This one has a bolt holding it there and there's also a gasket um, that's 
on the uh, underside of this that you have to replace when you take this filter out. Make sure you put the gasket in first and then the filter. Um, also, uh, that bolt right there needs to be torqued back to spec, which is 40 inch pounds. So make sure you do that if you have a torque wrench. And then that filter there just needs to be hand tightened, just like an, any other oil filter. Once you've done that, go ahead and go around the edge here and make sure there's no RTV chunks or anything like that. So take all of that off, make sure you clean it all off, make sure there's no oil or anything here. And then once you've done that, we can put the pan back. I'm not changing my, um, my filters, again, because my transmission really doesn't need it. I'm just doing this for the pan. And I got it serviced 15,000 miles ago. You gotta do this every 100,000 miles. So I'll save my current filters until I need to, to service it again. Now to speed up this process, you can also use the brake cleaner and just spray everything here. I know some people are gonna throw a fit about that on YouTube, but brake cleaner dries really quickly and it's really not that big of an amount and most of it would just fall off. So it, again, it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but um, just be aware that you can do that to uh, help you speed up this process. So here you can just spray this brake cleaner around the edge. Make sure you don't get any inside your filters though, that would definitely not be good. All right, so there we go and then just dry the edge off with the paper towel. All right, so there we go. That's pretty much as clean as it's gonna get. And make sure it's also dry, and then we can go back and get the pan ready. So here you have two options. You can either use a gasket, which usually comes with your filters, or you can use Ultra Black um, RTV. I've personally always used the um, these gaskets, but last time that I used one, uh, my transmission pan started leaking, and I don't really want to deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Ultra Black uh, Gasket Maker or RTV. Basically, you just get some of this and do a bead of it all along here. And I'll show you that. Now. So you just go around here with a nice bead and make sure you go around these bolt holes. And just basically do that around the whole thing. So you want something that looks kind of like this. Obviously this is a little messy. There's really, really no right or wrong way to do it. But just have a good bead of this all around um, and then while this is still wet you need to go ahead and get the pan and pop it back in and just finger tighten all the screws until you see this RTV seep out of the side On some of these screws, if they're going in too tight, make sure you don't force them and take them out. Just make sure you don't have any old RTV on them because that could cause problems and then you might end up breaking the bolt when you uh, torque it at the end.
So once you have this done, then just let it sit for about an hour and then come back and you can torque the bolts down. Now once you've waited about an hour for the RTV to sit, go ahead and get your torque wrench and set it to 105 foot-pounds. So you can see there it's set at 100 and then um, this black part um, is set at 5. Then tighten this um, screw or whatever at the bottom and then just torque those bolts around the transmission pan. Um, alternating from side to side just like you would with your tire.